Hello, welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to show you all of the two color brioche techniques that you can find in my Unda Cowl pattern. If you're looking for a seaming video, that is a separate video. So today I'm going to show you the brioche increases that are on the main side of the cowl. So there's two increases used and one decrease, which is on the contrast side of the cowl. So it's a little bit different than patterns I've done in the past where all of the increases and decreases are on the same side. But so yeah, I just wanna show you that. So let's get to it. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to work the two increases that are shown in the under cowl. And I'm showing them in the shawl version of the pattern. So you'll see along the right edge of the shawl or cowl, depending on which one you're knitting, are the increases for the shawl shaping. Okay, and this is what, this is using the brioche increase into a brioche knit stitch called Bark Yarn Over Bark or Bark Ya Bark. <laughs> That's what I like to call it. And here to create this beautiful faux cable is the BR6 stitch increase. Okay. And once you've worked a brioche increase, you can work all of them. They're worked very similar to a knit yarn over knit, except you're working them into a brioche stitch. So remember that with brioche increases, you always need to increase in an increment of two. Okay. Because you always need to have the brioche buddies, right? You need to have the bark, the brioche stitch and the single stitch next to it. So here I'm starting the row and I'm on my main side, starting with my main color. Okay. So we knit the edge stitch, right? Cause we want that beautiful selvage edge and we're going to work a YF slip on yarn over. And now we're going to work the bark yarn over bark into this brioche stitch right here. So we have two edge stitches and then we immediately come to the bark yarn over bark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my needle in as if to brioche knit. I'm going to work a bark one, but I'm going to leave the stitch on my left hand needle. Okay. So we have one new stitch here and I'm going to work a yarn over and this is going to actually create a new stitch. Okay. And then I'm going to work bark one again. So now I've just increased th two stitches. Okay. So now I can remove the stitch off my left hand needle. So I've gone from one stitch to three stitches. You can give your contrast color yarn a little tug here. Okay. So these are three brand new stitches. Okay. Do you want to treat them as such? You want to treat them as three separate stitches. Okay. And I'll show you what to do with your contrast color yarn. Once you finish the row and come back and work with your contrast color yarn. Okay. I'm going to work several just plain brioche stitches over to this stitch right here, which is where we're going to work the BR6 stitch increase. Okay. So we're just going to work YF slip one yarn over, bark one. Okay, so we've come to the stitch where we're going to work the BR6 stitch increase, okay? So we're going to work it into this brioche stitch. So we have our YF slip one yarn over is kind of the setup. Okay, so we're going from one stitch to seven stitches. So we're going to put our needle in as if to brioche knit. Bark one, leave the stitch on the left hand needle. 
yarn over, bark one. Okay, so remember that's exactly how we worked the bark yarn over bark, yarn over, bark, yarn over, bark. Okay, so you'll do the bark yarn over bark three times total. So now we have two, four, six, seven stitches total. These are all completely separate stitches. Okay, so that's, I mean, that's it. Basically, <laughs> with increases, you can just keep going. You know, you could do 8, 10, 12, 20, 40 if you wanted to. I mean, that'd be a little extreme. <laughs> but you can kind of see how it's just bark, yarn over bark, yarn over bark, and you just keep increasing. So you'll notice that this hole here for the BR6 stitch increase is a little bigger than for the bark yarn over bark, okay? So that is completely intentional and part of the beauty of the fabric, okay? So now I will, I'm gonna kind of slip my stitches back so that I can show you how to finish the row with your contrast color. So let's pretend you finish the row with your main color and then you slide back to finish it with your contrast color. So I'll show you how to work those increases with your contrast color. All right, so I'm just slipping these back. Obviously, this is not what you would do. <laughs> you would just actually finish the row with your main color and then work it with your contrast color. Okay, so let you know this is what your your work will look like when you slide back and need to finish the row with your contrast color. Okay, so you're, we're gonna slip the edge stitch purl wise and then burp one. Now we've come to the bark yarn over bark, okay? So this is where we're going to work each stitch separately, okay? And if you're a chart knitter, this is covered in the chart. But if you're if you're following the written instructions, this is called out with a note. Okay? So what we're going to do is wherever there wherever we worked the yarn over, that is going to be worked just as a purl one. Okay, so since we just burped one, we're going to work slip one YOF, okay? And now we're just going to purl that middle stitch. So think of it as like a little mini brioche setup, okay? So then slip one YOF, burp one, and you can continue on, okay? So now we actually have the brioche stitches where that increase is, and now we're just gonna work even brioche till we get to the BR6 stitch increase. And I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so now I've come to the BR6 stitch increase, okay? So just like the bark yarn over bark, wherever you worked the yarn over, you're going to just purl those stitches. So it's going to be purl one, purl one, purl one. Okay, so you'll work a slip one YOF, purl one, slip one YOF, purl one, slip one YOF, purl one, and then you'll end with a slip one YOF. This looks kind of weird because my, my yarn is still right here, but so you get the idea. It looks kind of congested at first when you finish it, but now you've seen, now I have the brioche stitches on my needles. So that's what that note means. Um, you know, on any round or row where increases are made, process the yarn overs as a purl one rather than a burp one. Okay, so that's exactly what that note means. So I hope this has been helpful for you. That is, um, and now I'm going to show how to work the decrease, which is the corresponding decrease to this 
six stitch increase because basically what you're doing is you're increasing your stitches on your main side and then you're decreasing them back down on your contrast side okay so I'll show you that all right now finally I want to share with you show you how to work the decrease for Unda Cowl and I'm showing this on the shawl version of that cowl so you'll be working your decreases on the contrast side of your work okay so as opposed to what I just showed you where the increases were on the main side of the work the decreases are on the contrast side because what I wanted it to look like was that the cables were going behind this kind of swirly part. And so by working the decrease on the contrast side of the fabric, it creates this really interesting look in the fabric. Okay, so this is the contrast side and the decrease is here. We're going to be working the left slanting decrease. So that's the B R L S L decrease. Okay. And that's the only decrease we're going to be working. So I'm actually, what you'll do is when you get to the contrast side, you'll work one row with your main color yarn and that'll just be even brioche. And then you'll slide back and you'll work finish the row with your contrast color yarn and that's when you're going to work the decrease okay so as you work the pattern you'll be able to see where the decrease is supposed to be so here right here is where I worked the decrease on the previous contrast row so I'll be working the decrease once I get to this stitch okay so I'll be working the BRL SL decrease so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work my way in my own knitting style. I'm going to work my way over to that where I'm going to be working the decrease. Okay, so obviously you'll want to follow along in the pattern wherever you are to make sure that you're working the decrease in the correct, you know, the correct place. So I'm just working even brioche knitting over to where I'm going to work the decrease and don't worry I'll move my hands I when I knit my hands are very close to my needles so don't worry I'll move them so you can see what I'm doing so I'm a thrower by nature that's just how I that's just how I knit that's how I'm most comfortable knitting so all right so now I'm at the three stitches where I'm going to work the BRL SL decrease Okay, so first I'm going to work a YF slip on yarn over. Okay, and that's kind of like the setup before we work the decrease. So we're going to be working the decrease into these three stitches. I'm going to call them A, B, and C. A and C are both brioche stitches. So you can see, if I turn my work back, you can see that's the brioche stitch right there. So the left slanting decrease is by far the easiest in my opinion it has the fewest number of steps okay so I'm gonna slip a knitwise okay because we want to twist that stitch so place your needle in as if to knit or brioche knit both the slip stitch and the yarn over slip it off so that you want to twist it you're transferring it from your left hand needle to your right hand needle and you're twisting it knitwise now we're going to brioche knit these two stitches together. So your needle is going to be going in three strands of yarn, okay? So you want to put your needle in through both the slip stitch and the yarn over of stitch C and stitch B. So we're going to basically like knit three together if you want to think about that. So here's my yarn coming. It's wrapping that slip stitch that we worked and I'm going to brioche those two together. And then I'm going to take A that we twisted and I'm going to pass that over both the slipped stitch and the yarn over. Okay, and now we're done. So that's the left slanting decrease and that so that it looks like a like it's slanting to the left on the contrast side, 
but when you turn it over to the main side, it looks like it's slanting to the right. So it's kind of the opposite. It works like the like a brioche pearl decrease, but I personally don't like <laughs> I don't like brioche pearl decreases, so I just work them on the contrast side of the fabric and that creates the same look. So there you go. Those are the techniques used in Unda Cowl, as well as my forthcoming shawl version of the pattern, which doesn't have a name yet. So keep your eyes out for that as well, coming later in 2021. So thank you so much for watching. And please be sure to subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this video and because I will be coming out with a lot more videos like this showing techniques in new pattern releases as well as old patterns. So thank you so much for watching.